the city in the early 70s um, instituted this kind of restoration of the Watts Towers, um, which actually almost destroyed them because they did it in a completely insensitive way and where his, he had uh, used all this tile and um, little um, bits of bottles, caps and stuff to decorate the towers and in many cases they just sort of um, replaced that with cement. Um, and um, they actually um, sort of in the attempts to structurally reinforce the tower, they actually, they actually made them weaker. Um, so they've been perpetually um, under restoration ever since. Um, and the city has never yet been willing to commit enough money um, to keep the towers properly restored. So that now um, it's possible to, um, to take guided tours of the towers, but actually most of the time um, they're not open because they're under some kind of restoration project or another. Uh, and that's, that's the case today. Um, that um, you can't, you can no longer go inside the towers and half the time they're covered with um, scaffolding. Um, and the city still refuses to commit the necessary funds to uh, restore and maintain the towers so that they're really accessible to everyone. Um, And finally, um, the, uh, the City Arts Commission, um, at one of their recent meetings when they were discussing the problems with the tower, said, well, maybe we could get the Getty to buy it. You know, the, the, the Getty Museum and the Getty Institute is this other arts organization in Los Angeles that has this um, fantastic expensive building on the top of a hill, the Getty Museum and Institute, and presumably has unlimited money, although um, they've had to uh, cut back their staff by, I don't know, 10 or 20 percent in the last few years. Um, and it's kind of in Los Angeles whenever there's a, a problem uh, with a lack of support for the arts, the answer is always, well, let the Getty do it. Uh, but in fact, the Getty never does, because it doesn't really have a, a commitment to uh, local art either. So I don't know, I mentioned this kind of as a, as a symptom, um, but also as an example of how um, um, this underground culture becomes official culture um, after the fact. Um, but when it does become official culture, it's in this very um, ambiguous way. Um, the striking thing is when you visit the Watts Towers, that most of the um, there actually aren't very many tourists who come to it. Um, partly because it's in uh, it's in a part of town where uh, people are afraid to go. Um, Los Angeles is a very segregated city. Um, Watts is no longer a predominantly black community, now it's a predominantly uh, Mexican and Latino community. Um, but still, it's considered this, um, it's considered to be a, a dangerous section of the city. Um, and um, you don't see a lot of um, Anglos there. In fact, um, in the course of, in the course of making um, the new movie that we're going to show later, Get Out of the Car. Um, we filmed a lot around Watts because um, uh, part of the film is a tribute to a, a nightclub, uh, a rock and roll club, or the, I call it the first rhythm and blues club in the United States, the Barrel House. It was founded by uh, Johnny Otis and a guy named Bardu Ali in 1948. Um, these are, you know, important figures in the history of Los Angeles music. And the Barrel House was just about a block west of where the Watts Towers is. Um, the Barrel House, of course, is no longer in existence and there's um, no trace of it whatsoever.
whatsoever. Um, so um, one day it happened. I was just uh, um, standing pretty much on the side of the barrel house and looking west toward the Watts Towers, which was about a half a block away. And um, this police car pulled up to me. And, you know, the policeman um, got out of the car and said, what are you doing here? Um, in other words, the, um, the fact that I was a white person in this part of town was cause for suspicion or, um, well, at least surprise, shock, even though um, um, I was right at the side of what I considered this tourist attraction. And, um, So that's, that's one example of, of um, uh, underground culture. And the, the film by William Hale is, a, is um, uh, I suppose, not a great film. Uh, it's a, you might say, a, a conventional documentary, but it's very precious because um, it was made while Simon Rodia was still working on the towers. and. Um, um, you hear his voice, um, you hear him talking about it, and you see him working on them. Um, unfortunately, for some reason, in the voiceover narration, he's referred to as uh, Simon Rodilla. Um, but that's the, the main flaw in the movie, I guess. Um, so it's a, it's a film that I'm happy has been uh, rediscovered. Restored by the uh, Motion Picture Academy Film Motion Picture yeah. Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences Film Archive, which is a um, quite an interesting and valuable institution, as are many of the things that the Motion Picture Academy does. Um, it's an organization that I admire very much, although except for the Academy Awards, um, which of course is what funds everything else, um, because they make a lot of money selling advertising for that. Um, and then they can do all this other work of preserving films and uh, exhibiting films. <coughs>